astronauts aboard the International Space Station are conducting a cold atom experiment, hoping to discover a new state of matter. However, just as the experiment is about to succeed, the station's alarm blares. An unknown object collides with the space station, causing everyone on board to lose balance. The intense turbulence sends various objects floating chaotically, and Johanna, who is in a video call with her daughter, almost loses consciousness. When the turbulence subsides, the space module is in disarray, and a massive fire blocks Johanna's path forward. Her colleague is trapped within. Johanna grabs a fire extinguisher and bravely extinguishes the flames around her, successfully helping her colleague escape. However, an explosion occurs ahead. Johanna grips the nozzle, intelligently using the reactive force to escape with her companion just before the explosion. Fortunately, they close the airlock door before the flames engulf them. The space station is severely damaged, and all astronauts must evacuate immediately. Unfortunately, Paul's hand is injured and caught in the airlock, and urgent treatment is needed to prevent him from fainting due to blood loss. Meanwhile, Johanna receives the distressing news that although Escape Pod 2 is undamaged, the power and pressure devices of Escape Pod 1 are damaged. They must repair Pod 1 to ensure everyone's evacuation. Johanna puts on her spacesuit and heads into space towards the power system. However, the damage is severe, with most circuits disconnected and even the oxygen system's pipes are ruptured. Ground control instructs her to go to the truss structure, where she must repair her life support system to ensure her companions have enough power and oxygen. As Johanna continues forward, the camera lights up red, indicating that the next cameras are unable to transmit signals. She will lose visual assistance and must rely on voice communication with ground control. Carefully approaching the truss structure, Johanna is astonished by the extent of the damage, suggesting a severe impact. She receives orders to investigate further. Here, the fabric has been torn open, revealing an impact object wedged in the truss components. It appears to be orange fabric. Johanna peels the entire fabric off with force, only to discover that the object that collided with the space station is a human corpse. She is momentarily speechless, and when her companion uses a camera to look from a distance, the body has returned to orbit, drifting away. Meanwhile, due to unsuccessful treatment, Paul loses his life. A moment of silence descends upon everyone. The astronauts, filled with sorrow, make their way to the escape pod for evacuation. Currently, Escape Pod 2 can accommodate three people, so they must leave one astronaut in space to repair Escape Pod 1 before departing. Johanna, as the captain, voluntarily takes on this heavy responsibility. She orders the other three members to leave and repairs the Escape Pod alone. They all understand the implications of leaving one person alone in space, but Johanna still directs them to escape in Pod 2. As she watches them depart, the life support system on the space station is sufficient for 19 hours. Within this time frame, Johanna plans to repair Escape Pod 1 and then leave. The urgent escape plan begins. However, the space station relies on solar power and undergoes sunrise and sunset every 45 minutes, raising the difficulty of the mission. As the sun sets, all power and ground communication are cut off. Johanna initiates the countdown and starts this lonely 45 minutes. During this period, she needs to conserve enough energy, but the image of the corpse she saw earlier prompts Johanna to sketch it. When the 45 minutes elapse, all power and communication are restored. Johanna rushes to the space station to find the batteries. As long as she replaces six batteries in the escape pod, she can successfully return to Earth. Assembling these internal batteries is not difficult for an excellent astronaut, and Johanna is determined to complete the task. To encourage her, the space agency invites her family to the command center. At this moment, the strength of her family can inspire the determination of the astronaut. However, just as Johanna's husband and daughter arrived on the scene, an unexpected incident occurred. The signal from the space station experienced an unknown issue, cutting off all communication between Johanna and the ground. Johanna, perplexed, attempted to call for help, but all efforts to reconnect with the ground proved futile. For now, she had to focus on the battery replacement task. 
With only 15 hours remaining, the will to survive compelled her to hasten her pace. Yet, during her repairs, a strange sound suddenly echoed from above. Johanna initially thought it was an auditory hallucination, but when she turned around to resume work, it seemed as if someone was knocking on the door. Johanna climbed to the top with a flashlight, opened the hatch, and as she approached, the knocking became clearer. Beyond the cold atom experiment apparatus, Johanna was shocked to find that the original space module had transformed into a long corridor. Her dropped flashlight indicated the presence of gravity in the corridor. Johanna tried removing her oxygen mask and found that she could breathe normally. At the end of the corridor, a cabinet emitted continuous knocking sounds as if someone were trapped inside. Hanging above the cabinet was a string of bracelets exactly like the one her daughter loved. Just as Johanna was about to touch it, a bright light appeared behind her. When she turned around, she found herself back in the space module. She quickly put on the oxygen mask to breathe and realized that the short episode had consumed eight hours. With little time left, Johanna focused on her tasks. She could install one battery in about an hour, and the remaining six batteries required six hours to complete. Everything was still manageable. Meanwhile, Johanna's husband anxiously waited on the ground, inquiring how long it would take to restore communication. Unfortunately, the response was regretful. It seemed that Johanna might not be able to return this time. They had not yet provided the orbital parameters for Johanna to return to Earth, even if she successfully repaired the batteries. Matt felt incredibly distressed. He believed that his wife would find a way to return to their family. Two hours remained. Suddenly, Johanna heard a broadcast sound, indicating that the command center's voice had transmitted to her location. The bad news was that Johanna's voice couldn't reach Earth. The command center was attempting to send the return parameters to the spacecraft. They continuously reminded Johanna not to forget to take the experimental apparatus. The cold atom experiment might have already succeeded, and his return would be historic. As the sun rose again, with only one and a half hours remaining, Johanna successfully replaced the batteries in advance, restoring power to escape pod 1. All parameters checked out fine, but the return parameters from the ground command center still hadn't arrived. Johanna decided to use the parameters used by escape pod 2 the day before. However, the system displayed that the parameters had expired. Johanna realized that to return to Earth, he had to calculate the orbital parameters himself. With professional training, he quickly focused and after complex calculations, successfully obtained the orbital parameters. Before leaving, he took out the cold atom device and returned to escape pod 1, preparing for the final launch process. After entering the parameters, Johanna put on his spacesuit, closed the escape pod door, fastened his seatbelt, and pressed the button to start the countdown. Suddenly, the system displayed a red light. The sixth bolt malfunctioned, causing the escape pod to jam. Johanna hurriedly consulted the maintenance manual to figure out how to repair the bolt. However, the manual indicated that it required two astronauts to operate. Johanna's heart sank. The last chance to return home seemed to slip away, and all efforts appeared to be in vain. As the ground command center's countdown ended, they still hadn't received any news from Johanna. On Earth, this situation could only be regarded as the astronaut's death, and everyone present mourned. Little did they know, at the last moment, the malfunction signal in Johanna's escape pod was resolved, and escape pod 1 smoothly left the space station, entering orbit.